Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So I think this is one, two, three, four. This is the fifth show I've recorded tonight. And depending on how I've released the shows, if I've done it twice a week or I've done it once a week, uh, this show is either right about the time I've had my heart operation or it's coming up soon. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm powering through and I think I have three or four more episodes to record. Um, so if I die, hopefully my dad will release all the shows. Sorry to be morbid about that. Anyway, um, if you want to know more about that episode four or two, anyway, um, or you can send me an email and I'll, I'll reply back to you anyway. Uh, so we got two more wines, uh, from this actually came from Jane, uh, but, um, uh, from Creative Palette, so uh, she's been so kind to send me some stuff, and there's a whole bunch of information that, unfortunately, I'm not going to be, like, you know, just powering through, but um, maybe I should scan these, and then I can put them on the website. Anyway, so uh, she was very kind to send me a couple of these wines. I've had wines from these producers before. We've reviewed them before. Um, so Creative Palette tends to send me a lot of the same producers every year, so I tend to, you know, have the same stuff, just new vintages. Um, so we have the Ferriton Per Ephis. Um, two of these. Uh, the first one we're going to do is called Samarans or Samarens. It's got the umlaut, so maybe it's not ons, it's ends. Um, anyway, so I didn't know this before, but the Samarens name is a tribute to the Ferriton founder Jean Orens Ferriton and his grandson Sam, Sam Orens. Now I know what it is. So I'm like, what is this? Is it like a vineyard? I mean, it's not an appellation. Um, anyway, so uh, so this is the first one. This is the 2015 uh, Ferriton uh, Per Efis uh, Sam Orens Cotes du Rhone, Cotes du Rhone Red. Uh, this is a blend of uh 85% Grenache. Uh, it's also it's um sorry retail suggested retail is $14. It's a blend of 85% Grenache, 10% Syrah, and 5% Cinso. So a GSC. All right. Get a little bit here. Uh, this is from a mix of estate and negotiant vineyards, primarily located in the Northern Rhone, 1998. Uh, he introduced, oh, that's about to go. Uh, he introduced, whoa, I guess there was more than I thought, uh, but I started hearing it like leak, which sometimes happens. Uh, anyway, he introduced biodynamic farming practices throughout its estate vineyards in order to capture and reflect greater expression of terroir. More recently, in 2013, uh, the Ferriton Winery and Cellars benefited from a major investment with updates to including new state-of-the-art equipment throughout and fermentation tanks sized to their vineyard parcels. Um, anyway, grapes are distemmed and vinification occurs in thermoregulated cement vats, color and tannins are extracted by punch down. Maceration lasts about 15 days. All right, so just got my backups there. All right, let's get into this wine. Uh, let me just take a look real quick if there's anything on the actual fact sheets that I want to mention real quick. Um, nope, 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 nope. Everything is already there. Okay, cool. Or is there something on the fact sheet that might give you a little more? Okay, cool. A little map on there kind of gives you a little, um, little idea of what's going on. All right, cool.
Come on, iPhone, make it through all the all the stuff. If you didn't know, I'm recording both. I'm recording on my regular camera and the phone camera. Whichever one actually makes it to the internet, we'll see. But I'm really just more like a test of the phone setup in a real situation um, rather than replacing my home setup because th this camera and all my other practice, all my other tests, this camera was has produced a much superior um, image because it's better. Well, it's a bigger sensor. It should be still better, even though it's, I don't know, like a six year old camera compared to an iPhone 10. So anyway, not that the iPhone 10 takes bad video. I mean, I took some awesome video in 4k of the Jean-Michel Jarre concert in Dallas and Houston. Yeah, I was like that. I was that dude. I traveled to Dallas, saw him there, drove down the next day to see him in Houston. Awesome. Awesome concert. Both times. Anyway. No, I just totally went right into the wine. Didn't tell you anything about it, did I? It's good. It's, it's I mean, for $14, it's good. But let's, let's talk about the nose real quick. So the nose, it wasn't a whole lot on the nose, okay? There's a little bit of like dried cranberry, a little bit of, you know, dried flowers. Um, so I would say more mineral or, or non-fruit driven or at least dried fruit. But really there's nothing else. On the palate, it's not a ton on the palate either. It's just, it's just like, it just tastes good. Um, it's a light, um, it's fairly easy drinking. Um, tannins aren't too terrible. Like they're not, they're not overwhelming. Um, you get the, tr the dried cranberry, you get the dried flowers, you get the, uh, a little bit of spice, um, a little bit of pepper. Um, it's, it's like pleasant. It's not like in your face spices. Um, it's like, it's like something I could totally just kick back and just sip on, even though it's a red wine, maybe not hundred degree Texas heat, you know, in the middle of the day, but you know, after a long night at work or, you know, you know, you're going to have a, you know, a pretty decent dinner. You want something that's going to complement, uh, say a little earthier, uh, food rather than like, you know, something like lighter, like you could, so if you're gonna have like filet mignon, it'll go well with it, but you kind of want something that's got a little bit more uh, flavor to it, so it can match up to it, it can stand up to it. Whereas, even though it's not a powerful wine, it might overpower just a plain old steak type of thing, you know? Um, if you're gonna have something a little bit heartier, but not too hearty, right? It, it's not the level of like stew and like roasted meat, you're like, it will go with it, but the food might overpower it. So, yeah. But it's good. I like it. But there's not a ton going on either. All right. Let's get into wine number two. All right, wine number two is again the Ferraton Per Ephes, uh 2015 Crows Hermitage uh, La Matinere. La Matinere. Matinere. Okay, anyway, 100% Syrah from Ferraton's tradition collection of Negotiant wines, each a textbook example. Might have to help if I put the little thing in there. Of his appellation. Tradition refers to a traditional approach in the Rhone of blending from various vineyards. In this case, fruit comes from a mix of estate and neighboring vineyards in the uh, Mercurial and Beaumont Montu districts of central and southern Gros Hermitage. Uh, vintage conditions in 2015 were pretty much perfect, uh, says. Uh, warm sunshine when needed, the right amount of rain at the right time, 
and a long growing season. Add to that the hallmark freshness and purity of Ferriton's house style, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then I'll see what else they've got in the rest of the packet. Uh, this retails or suggested retail price is $23. Alrighty, let's kind of look at the packet. That's more about regular stuff. Let's see here. Uh, this is more about Crow's Hermitage. In the tough 1960s when vineyards were being abandoned, uh, Michel Ferreton bought prime parcels in central and southern Crow's Hermitage, specifically in the two towns I mentioned. Um, soils forming the relatively flat plateaus and terraces south and east of the Tain the Hermitage, which is like the hill, uh, typically comprise layers of pebbles from various glacial periods mixed with red clay. Um, potassium residue in the soil makes for fleshier, rounder wines. Much of the central and southern portions of Crow's Hermitage were once planted with fruit trees, especially peach orchards, which needed a lot of potassium to grow. Uh, let's see here. La Matinere, uh, or early bird, was the affectionate nickname given to Colette Ferreton, ever the early riser by her winemaker husband, Michel, whose father, Jean Orans uh, Ferreton, founded Ferreton in 1946. So now we know why it's called that. All right, cool. And on the back side of this, um... Is there anything else on here that I, uh, is partially matured in oak barrels for 12 months before bottling? Maceration lasts about 20 days. Uh, they do punch down for extraction. Grapes are distemmed and the vinica vinification takes place in vats. Okay. Boom. All this wine is making me hungry again. But then again, I only had like a single slice of pizza, like at freaking six o'clock. And it's like after 1230. So a little bit more going on in the aromas uh, in, in, on, on this wine. Uh, a little funk, a little earth, uh, a little forest floor. Uh, a little bitter chocolate. A little bit of coffee, espresso type of thing, a touch of black fruit, what I'm not getting, and I'll probably get it on the palate, I'm not getting black pepper, I'm not getting roasted meat and meats, which you would expect from Syrah. So, and these wines are definitely warm enough now, whereas, you know, two hours ago, they were a little bit cooler. But yeah, a little bit of red fruit in there, a little bit of vanilla. Palette is almost exactly like the uh, like the nose. Um, <coughs> it leads with the earthier um, qualities. Um, then the fruit, uh, the tannin, it's a little bit heavier tannin than this last wine. I can really kind of feel it on my mouth. Call me crazy, but I get a little roasted corn, a little bit of cinnamon. Again, I don't get the meat and the meatiness and the black pepper that I was expecting from a Syrah. Um, not sure why. If I was blinding this, I would not put this in the Northern Rhone. I might throw in that as a Syrah, uh, but I might say it's more of a blend, which is what this is. Not that this was Syrah-like. Um, I might throw this as a, a Southern Rhone blend. Okay. 
but if we're talking about is it about typicity of place and, and grape, I, I maybe somebody else would get it, but I, I don't. Is it a good wine? Yeah, it's a good wine. Um, it's tasty. I think it tastes better than this one. And again, I know it's a little more expensive. It's not because it's more expensive, but it doesn't, to me, taste like it's supposed to taste as far as what I'm used to with Syrahs and Northern Rhone. So what I'm saying is I would be a little disappointed being told it's Syrah. I'm like, well, I don't really get the Syrah necessarily out of it. I don't know. But will you like the wine? I don't know. Probably. Um, it's not, you know, it's not cheap. It's not expensive. Um, it's tasty. I'm definitely going to enjoy drinking it uh, when it when it comes time for me to drink the wine. But it kind of leaves me wanting for more knowing that it's a Syrah. All right. So um, that's going to do it for this episode. Um as always, you can click the links above to friend me up. Again, I'm really not on social media. Um, maybe at this point, I might hop into social media just to look for you know not, you know people like sending me messages and stuff like that. Um, especially now that you know it's more cats out of the bag about the operation. Um, well, was out of the bag already. I mean, the first episode I did. Um, and then uh, click the link over there to uh, send some ducats my way. Uh, whether you want to help me with purchasing wine, uh, which obviously all these are free wines. I didn't buy them, but I did buy a ton of wine over the past couple years. And it's all in that cooler that's back there uh, that will eventually get reviewed uh, to help me with that or to help me with, you know, what I got going on medically. Um, that'd be great. If not, don't worry about it because um, this is obviously not my job. If it was, I'd be more of a hard sell on that. Um, and click the links below for, uh, the links for the winery and, um, that's going to do it. Uh, again, thanks for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time.